Welcome to the Expert Talks by Calkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's episode features Mr. Atif Saeed. He's the CEO and founder of Woot Zano. I got your ears pricked up now, haven't I? Well, the robotics and AI sector is set to grow significantly over the next five to ten years as technology advances. And in the UK, some fun facts for you, around 70 million cups of coffee are drunk daily and they eat on average five billion bananas a year. So what on earth has that got to do with today's show? Well, recently, supply chain delays have caused some shelves to remain empty for longer than usual. And today's guest, Wootzano, is a robotics company who makes dexterous robots to help with supply chains. And another issue called food security is built on four pillars of food availability, food access, food use and food stability. And if one of these pillars is unstable, people can live in a state of food insecurity. So we'll be sharing more insights from the agri-tech sector from today's guest based in Sedgefield in the northeast of England. Should be an interesting show, so keep watching till the end. Excited to bring you live today. We have Mr. Atif Saeed, CEO and founder of Wit Zano. Welcome to the show, Atif. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me along. Um, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Brilliant to be here. Thank you so much. For making time it's glad I'm sorry I'm glad to have you with us and you've <laughs> created such a fine robotic system to help the agricultural industry however the general public still try and understand the applicability of robotics in our everyday lives so as our expert uh, today your insights are going yeah, to be very no, valuable um, absolutely no thanks so much um, I think uh, the mission for what we're doing in Woodsano is to democratize robots so what what I see and we all see is that robots are not as accessible for people. So people don't see robotic systems as something they would require akin to, let's say, a washing machine at home. So our mission and our aim for the company is really to democratize that and make it more accessible. Uh, we've started doing this by, by capturing a huge untapped market, which is food uh, food packaging industry. So as you sort of gave an intro about uh, some interesting facts, which actually I didn't know how many bananas people ate in the UK, but but when you look at food um, packing and how it eventually comes to your shelves, a lot of that uh, packing for especially soft, fresh produce, which can be easily damaged, is done manually. So the issue in the past sort of few years, uh, especially with Brexit here in the UK, but also with COVID-19, it swelled up the demand is, is the availability of human labor. So, so the problem is first of all the packers, they have to go and find a lot of people to do the manual job. So the jobs which you're doing are effectively picking up your, your, your grapes or wine tomatoes or tomatoes dexterously without bruising or damaging it. So currently robotic systems and automation uh, is just not there. It's not there to be set sensitive and dexterous enough. So our robotic system, uh, our eye, as we call it, is designed exactly to solve that problem. So our robotic system is dexterous, which means it can pick very easily damaged products like grapes and, and, and um, tomatoes and wine tomatoes, strawberries, without really bruising or damaging, but at the same dexterity, in fact, better dexterity than humans. So, so what we're doing is we're taking something as a, as a problem in, 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 our, in our food industry and solving it with a very dexterous robotic systems. Fantastic. Sounds amazing that you're able to make these robots more sensitive and dexterous. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, can we also get a little bit of background before we move on on the name Woodzano and where that comes from? Very curious to find out. Yeah, so, 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 so the name itself comes, it's an amalgamation of two, two uh, names. So the wood sun or the woods part comes from wood steel. Uh, so this steel used to be a well-known steel sold from Asia across, across Europe to the Silk Route. Uh, and recent years, uh, they found out that the, the, the swords, which you, they used to make using wood steel, had nanostructures in it, which actually gave uh, the, the capability and the strong ability for the swords to be highly sought after. And, and the anopod is effectively a play of words for nano. And when you combine these two words together, uh, there's no trademark for it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's catchy and obviously has a, a bit of a meaning behind it. Um, and, and, the, and a robotic system, Avarai, also comes similar similar background. So the leaves they used 
to make the root steel, the carbon in wood steel, is effectively coming from a leaf called alvari. <laughs> so, so that's that's how the name structure uh, came about. Fantastic! Thank you for that history lesson in a nutshell. There. So now you are helping the agricultural industry. Fruit picking is not the easiest of jobs, and your robots are designed to find a solution to that issue. So can you please elaborate on the patented technology that has enabled robots to have greater sensory awareness of the environment? Are these transhuman in any way? Not, not, not exactly. So I think one of the issues with all of us is when we look at robotic systems, we always look at it through the eyes of human beings. And you look at a human body as the best example, but in reality it's not. You, what you have to look at is what are you trying to solve using these robots and work backwards from it. And actually you, you now have the ability to, to create intelligent designs. You have the ability to, to, to make, to learn from human designs and the flaws, potential flaws of human designs with the human hand um, and, and actually make it better, which means you can make this robot more effective and faster. So in our robotic system, we use quite a bit of tech and one of the unique bit we have is an electronic skin we've developed. So this skin is similar uh, akin to human skin, but in fact, infinitely more sensitive. Uh, so the way I say it is that on your human skin, the fingertip part of the skin has the most it is the most sensitive so we have something called mechanoreceptors on top of the on, on, on fingertips and the skin the 241 mechanoreceptors in the same surface area on a human skin but when you compare that with our electronic skin we put in, on a robot the 7 billion nanowires which act similar to a mechanoreceptor so so when i say infinitely more sensitive it's it's it's, it's an understatement so we put the skin onto the end effect effectively your fingers as, as you call it robotic fingers and robotic hand in order to make sure this robot is able to grasp an object and make sure it, it doesn't apply too much force and too less force so that it can properly pick the product uh, so in this case you can call it grapes which is the most complex fruit we pack so pick up the robot picks up a bunch of grapes and and then applies the right amount of force to make sure that it doesn't bruise or damage it, but at the same time it's measuring for direction of force. What it means is if the, if the bunch of grape is slipping out of the robot hand, it knows exactly what motion to do in order to counter that, 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 that direction of force. So by using that, it's sort of giving that human intuition, human touch, human feel, but actually with an intelligent design, which means it's much more faster, much more efficient for the end customer to be able to do the job in this case, picking and packing products. So, so, so that's effectively one of the things we do, but our robotic system is the only one which is commercially available, which can estimate weight, can do snipping, <laughs> can remove that bad bunches of berries. It can do basically a lot of things what a pair of hands would do. Um, so, so we've automated that process for the end customer. That's amazing. So, you know, from someone, a lay person like me, who's not um, a, engineer, a robotic engineer, um, it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, reverse engineering to make a more elite product or more elite uh, humanoid robot that you're speaking of who is dexterous and sensitive. Sounds amazing. And if people are interested in studying this more from your knowledge you're sharing with us, what would you say is a good basis um, to begin this type of investigation? Is it mathematics? I mean, I, 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 well, well, you, you can start off with that, but I think if you if you look at it from just a basic from the basic uh, perspective of what robots are and what robots can do, I think in order to understand robots, it's important to to look at what the current technology is capable of doing. Because when you look at robots, it's important to also physically <laughs> have, have have a look at one of the robotic manipulators, like our robots and see that although it's inspired by humans, but it's not really a human and it's not really designed to be a human hand or a human arm. So I think understanding those concepts would be the fundamental key for someone who's not in the field to understand and appreciate what 
needs to be done to get robotic systems out and about, but also that it's important to detach ourselves from the human-centric view of viewing what a robot should look like to what a robot actually is to achieve the job. So you don't really need a humanoid robot, a uh, hover robot which looks like a human, um, unless, uh, I don't know if you're putting them in hospitality sector, you actually don't need a robot to do that. So that's that's a mindset. So whenever people, you talk about robots uh, picking and robots handling stuff, people immediately go towards a human hand uh, and Android. But that's that's not not true. That's not that's not what robotics really is, especially in the, in the industry we are in. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And Atif, we're pleased to know that with Zano has been in operation for less than four years in the market but has closed one of the largest contracts ever for a robotics company in the UK. Can you please share insights on the deal and how this will impact the future of the business please? Uh, absolutely. So we've got a contract to deliver uh, a robotic system for one of the most complex fruits, uh, like I said, table grapes. Uh, it's The reason why it's more complex is because in even for a human to pick up a bunch of grape and try to know what the weight of that is, put in a weight scale and check the weight, and then to be able to snip the stem, making sure you don't snip any berries in the middle, it's a complex task. So asking the robot to do that, uh, which is just born, you know, yesterday, it's, it's again a very, very big ask. So the fact that we've solved that problem uh, means that we're able to go much, 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 much further from that. So we are providing these uh, robotic systems to integrate to one of the largest packers uh, in, uh, in the industry, in the UK and Europe. To, uh, to pack uh, table grapes for various supermarkets um, here in the UK and across across Europe. And going forward, because of the fact that we did table grapes, we are re-entering, we already got a robots for tomato picking and, and packing as well. And we are now going into wine tomatoes. We've had uh, ginger, uh, melons, papayas, uh, various stone fruits, um, uh, which, which we've been asked to, to, to make our eye pack and, and process for, for, for various customers. And we're also entering into uh, processing meat. Uh, so one of the areas where it's quite difficult for, for uh, machines to really cut meat is, 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 is an area where it requires a lot of dexterity. And that particular part is, is very, it's very difficult to find people to do that. And, and it's quite a complex uh, process. And our robotic systems, because the fact that it's able to do all of this, it's a it's perfect candidate to actually do the cuttings. We've got customers in that, that area as well. We're going into fishes as well. So essentially anything to do with food industry, starting from fruit and vegetable, and then eventually to the meat and fishes and any edible products, that's effectively where we're heading towards. Um, we are in the process of building um, a, a bigger facility with an integrated factory. Uh, it's an 80,000 square foot facility we're building uh, in, in uh, Sedgefield and Net Park where we are based in the northeast of England. Um, and, and, and that's to cater the existing contracts and also the other demand we are coming in, demand which comes in and it is coming in uh, as we speak. Fantastic. Sounds like you're very well placed to progress in your business and the market share there. Uh, fundamentally, we can't survive without food, so uh, it's a very exciting space to watch. And as we wind up the discussion now, Atif, there are pros and cons for almost everything. And it sounds like the yeah. robots are becoming smarter and uh, evolving as the engineers and the technology advances. So what happens to the current robots as the newer robots uh, are released, the new generation comes in. Is there a process where they're recycled? Is there byproducts from this industry? Can we know a little bit about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, our current contracts with the customers, we sell the robots, the robot is sold for uh, a, a cost. And then there's a monthly subscription fee, uh, which effectively maintains the robot for a period of time. So it can be anywhere from five years to six years. And, and what that means is in that period of time, as long as the customer pays for a monthly subscription fee, we will maintain and, and do reasonable upgrades. So the idea is that you buy a robot and you actually keep it for a period of time. And for us as a business, it's a recurring revenue. So you're not just sold a robot at one, one price and that's it. You actually have a, a contract and a recurring model where you're essentially generating revenue on a monthly basis for the robots you already sold for, for a longer period of time. So it's a win-win situation for both, both of us, as in uh, Wutsano and the customer. So the customer gets a product for a period of time and we get it. We get to obviously generate revenue from that product for a period of time. Um, and also for our customer, the, the robotic system itself, there's a return of investment of about a year 
So you buy the, buy the system now and within a year you get the money back from all the cost savings and stuff the robot is, is capable of doing. So, 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 so going forward, uh, so going forward, I think one of the biggest, uh, biggest attributes of the robotic system would be um, whenever there is an upgrade, it's not physical removing of the actual robot, it's physical, physically removing and replacing uh, the, the processors or CPUs or GPUs which have been upgraded um, and, and RAM, you know, little components within the, 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 the PC, the little components within the, the motors, those are the ones which are replaced rather than a complete revamp or, or shift of the robotic system because the customers are paying for the robots to be continually up upgraded as, as the robot does the job. That sounds fantastic. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that with us. So in your opinion, just for some final thoughts, um, what cons or negatives can you see with robots? And if there, and if there are any, how can we overcome those? So, so everything can, every technology and every bit will have obviously pros and cons. The cons, uh, one of the biggest thing which people look at is, well, the robots are taking away jobs. Uh, or, or robots are taking the jobs of pickers and what do pickers do. But the reality is we see it as the robots are actually filling in the roles. Uh, the jobs actually were never filled. It was quite difficult to fill those jobs. But more importantly, we are converting those roles because as these robots are going in, we are converting those those um, those pickers to essentially start working in, in, in maintaining the robots, start working in, in either producing or manufacturing the robots. We're even starting a program where will retrain the pickers who are working in, in the field to be retrained as robotic technicians, uh, which effectively gives them a lot more secure jobs, a higher quality and paying jobs, uh, as opposed to um, essentially a, a zero hour contract workers, um, but, which doesn't have any loyalty to either from the employer and the employee. So so that was one of the biggest things, but the way we, we don't see it as, 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 as that, because we are we're taking all these steps to essentially make sure that the robotic integration shouldn't be that there are people losing out. It should be a benefit to everyone. Right, right. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. We really do appreciate you making time for our show amidst your busy schedule, I'm sure. Thank you so much. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you. And if you'd like to find out more about Woodsano, an easy Google search will bring up a plethora of information. They've had quite a strong press campaign recently. So please check them out. And if you'd like to watch the full interview with our guest today, the CEO and founder of Woodsano, Mr. Atif Saeed, please head to our YouTube channel, Calkine Media, and keep watching for more of the expert talks and live market updates. And as we say, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine.